get started. Uh, we'll get started now. Thanks everybody for joining us, um, and we look forward to. Uh, I really am looking forward to uh, you guys watching this uh, presentation and, and getting a value out of it. I think you'll find it very beneficial. Um, so, how to protect your network from 95% of all attacks? The reason why we really wanted to put this together is uh, we know that. 95% of all issues happen because somebody clicked on something they shouldn't have. But the thing is, they don't know what they clicked on and they got fished, they got uh, hacked, something happened that made them uh, feel like they should click on something that's malicious. Or um, some stuff is not done internally or they're on a website, they're not sure if it's a real website or not or what the links are all about. They receive emails all the time and we figured the most important piece here is to educate the consumer, to make you an educated consumer, somebody, a, a, a good steward of the internet, somebody that is able to browse and look around and use their machine, but knowing best practices and knowing what they need to look for to know if they're going to be had or not. Now, nothing is 100% foolproof, but education is key um, and knowledge is power. So. That's what this is all about. How can we get your employees to truly understand what to, to look for? How can we train them? How can we make it happen? So we had partnered with a company called Breathe Secure Now, and we are lucky enough to be able to have their VP of sales um, and uh, uh, Matt Koning. Matt, I hope I said your last name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Uh, and Matt is going to come in and show us. Uh, it's a tool. It's a it's a uh, it's a dashboard. It's a uh, an online tool that you log into and all your employees log into. And I'm, I'm going to have him explain it more. But we find great value in it. If you have uh, if you're on a gold partner of ours, you're already getting this tool uh, and you're using it. I hope uh, your partner success manager should be talking to you about it. Uh, but if you're in silver or or bronze, you're not. Uh, and we highly recommend you having it. Um, it's an add-on, it's a small add-on, but well, besides we get into all of that, let me show you what this is all about. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Matt. Um, I'm gonna make, uh, give Matt uh, keyboard and mouse control. Matt, uh, you should have control now. Okay, uh, let's see. There we go. Perfect. So good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming out. We really appreciate your time. Ikram, I appreciate the uh, introduction. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about how to protect yourself, how to get your end users or your employees on board with making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing to protect your organization on an ongoing basis. You know, one of the things that we found, come on, there we go, is COVID-19 is causing a lot of problems. Uh, and what, Ikram, I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry, that was me. I clicked on I something by mistake. Oh, okay. Hold on. So do you, okay. So, so you're in control now. I, I'm letting go. Okay, good. Sorry about that. That's okay. So, you know, one of the things that we have found out over years of doing this, and this is all we do at my company, uh, as sick as it is, is employees are the root cause of all breaches. Don't care what anybody says. You can have the best hardware, the best software, the best everything. But like I always liken it to, if on your home you had a steel bulletproof door, and you had 14 different types of lock, including biometrics and all this other stuff. The problem is it doesn't do any good when you let your kid go to the door and open it up and say, hey, come on in. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about. But I thought I'd start with something uh, that I found a while ago and I think is absolutely hysterical. And uh, I, again, you can't make this up. This is actually real. If you want, go to Amazon. The company's out of business but there's a similar piece on Amazon, if you don't believe me. So here's Ellen. Last night I was flipping around through the channels and I saw this, I, I really love infomercials. I don't know if you love them as much as I do, but I found one, it's a new product that I wanna share with you. 
And, uh, you know, if you have a hard time remembering your online passwords, a lot of people have a lot of different passwords. This is going to solve your problems. Online passwords, there's just too many. And who can remember all those tricky combinations? So you stick them on your monitor or you hide them in a drawer. But not anymore. Introducing Password Minder, the personal logbook that takes the hassle out of passwords. Forget about sticky notes or scraps of paper, because Password Minder has been specifically designed to organize and safely store passwords. You'll find them in an instant and never lose a password again, guaranteed. Need to make a password? Just add it to your Password Minder. The alphabetical listing organizes all your usernames and passwords for instant recall and easy reference. I don't have to worry anymore about security or identity theft. I now have all my passwords in one place. It's free. If you have passwords, you need Password Minder. So call now and get your very own Password Minder book for just $10. That's real. That's real. Yeah. Wait, you're telling me I can keep all my passwords in one place? In this right here and it's only $10? For half the price, you could write all your passwords on a $5 bill. <laughs> this is insane. Does this seem safe to keep all your passwords in one place? In a place that's labeled Internet Password Minder? <laughs> I don't think they thought this through fully. I mean, what if somebody gets their hands on your password minder? So I came up with this. It is Ellen's Internet Password Minder Protector, and what you do, yeah, is put the you close it, and then it has a built-in combo combination lock right there, you see on the side, and I know you're thinking, Ellen, what if I forget my combination? Well, if you order now, you can this, you can put it in there. It's the password minder protector minder. It's the one place to keep your password minder protector combination. And I have one more special offer. If you don't feel like writing down your passwords, send them to me. And for $10, I'll write them down for you. Don't worry about sending me your credit card information. I'll figure it out. Oh my. So uh, unfortunately, that's real. <laughs> go to Amazon. Through the channels, and I saw this. I, I come on. You actually see where that's a real thing. Uh, they're out of business now. Shocker. And the scary part is, I know everybody on this call right now is thinking of one employee that they could picture doing this, or is currently doing it with sticky notes or something. Absolutely crazy. Okay, so let's get into this a little bit. COVID-19 has had a huge impact on security, right? People are working from home, so there's increased productivity, right? A lot of times people increase their productivity from home, but there's also huge distractions, you know, family, chores. Let me go run that errand real quick. Uh, you know, let me do all these other things. There's also no more compute, commute, right, or physical security. So home offices are 3.5 more likely to get hack basically, uh, because they have outdated software, no network security, wide open firewall, they don't pass or protect their wireless network, absolutely nuts. So, so far, and this is just this year, COVID-19 fraud has caused over $13 million. This is not business, this is consumer-based, okay? Based on coronavirus phishing attacks, and what that basically means is they're sending out email talking about you know specific topics on COVID-19, latest report on deaths, Trump does this, the WHO came out with a new study, and people because they're scared, they're clicking on this stuff, and you know it's one of those things where people want information, so they're playing on that. However, in return, they're also stealing passwords. They're also taking control of machines. They're planting, uh, you know, password uh, or key loggers, I'm sorry, for the future. There's been a 148% increase in ransomware demand from February to March alone. Absolutely ridiculous. And related spear phishing attacks grew 667%. 
the FTC received over 36,000 reports related to COVID ID fraud. 40% of business owners are scared that they're gonna to have to make a decision, this is you, between keeping their businesses safe effectively or going out of business because of the amount of money they feel they need to spend in order to do this effectively. So as I said, humans are the leading cause of data breaches everywhere, anytime, for any reason. And what's really scary and again, you probably live this every day. 49% of people polled knew what phishing was. That's it, 49%. 51% of people have no idea what phishing is. They think you're going to the lake, throwing in a rod and relaxing on your boat. This should scare you in itself. 90% of adults admitted to using employer-issued devices for personal activities. Again, shocker. Problem is, they're going to sites they shouldn't, they're looking at their personal email, and they're doing all kinds of other stuff they shouldn't be doing. It gets worse. 50% of people surveyed admitted they let their kids use their laptop, they let their friends use their work laptop, you know, they let someone hanging around the house wants to look something up, use their work laptop. How do you protect from that? 45% of working adults also admit to reusing passwords constantly. Now, I won't tell you what state I'm in in order to protect the innocent, but my wife works for the state that I live in. And for, when I first met her and she brought me into her office, she had a Rolodex. Yep, you heard that right, a Rolodex. For those of you that aren't old enough to remember what a Rolodex is, it's this big long thing with all these little cards in it like this and they flip forward. Anyway, and it's alphabetized. So she had this Rolodex and I was like, I know government agencies are behind the time, but what is this? And what was funny about it is she said, that's where I keep all my passwords. <laughs> what? She had alphabetized the name of the account and the password for everything. We're not talking about internet access. We're not talking about just PC access. We're talking about Charles Schwab, banking accounts, credit card accounts. I told her she couldn't be married to me anymore unless she handed me that Rolodex right now. And those of you that think I'm kidding, I swear one time I do these, I'm gonna go get that Rolodex from downstairs and I'm gonna show it to everybody. I made her take it out of her office because I was like, do you understand what I do? So how can your organization safeguard remote employees? So there are five simple steps to safeguarding remote employees. And MVP can provide you all of these things and do it in an excellent manner. They're one of our best partners. So you need to teach cybersecurity basics. You can't assume that your staff knows it. You assume way too much if you think that your staff unders, understands basic cybersecurity protocol, uh, hygiene, et cetera, et cetera. You also need to be able to identify phishing because again, phishing is the number one cause right now of data breaches. You need to have a set of written security policies. I know some of you are going, yeah, my staff knows what to do and what not to do. No, they don't. I find that uh, employee staff, no matter how good they are, when it comes to stuff like this, they're like children. They need to be constantly reminded, given a framework, given specific instructions, and they need to sign it <clears throat> to make sure that you know, they know that they understand it. There needs to be continuous reinforcement. You know, uh, cyber criminals spend a ton of time keeping up with uh, new things, new trends, new topics to send stuff out with. I, I mean, the reality at the end of the day is you need to make sure you're doing as much with your employees as they are researching stuff. And there needs to be visual results, right? There needs to be reporting. They need to know that you're watching. They need to know where they stand. Without visual results, I truly believe that there's nothing else that matters because they don't care if they don't know they're being watched. Also, one of the things that you need to be aware of is ongoing uh, compliance trends. You've got state compliance, you've got federal compliance, you've got HIPAA and PCI and NIST, and the list goes on and on and on. 
And if your organization doesn't have any compliance pieces right now, oh, you will, you will give it six to 12 months. And they're going to require a lot of this training. They're going to require you to have a set of security policies that are signed off on. They're going to require you to make sure that everything is exactly the way they're supposed to. They're already putting it into effect in the legal sector, as well as California is doing it for uh, health, you know, EPHI, they're also doing it from a finance standpoint. Uh, basically in New York, it's financial at this point in time. South Carolina is putting something in place at this moment. There are about 12 states that are working on their own, uh, their own pieces. So security awareness training, what is it? Well, it covers core topics like secure use of email and internet and social media and educate on topics like phishing and malware, et cetera, et cetera, what to do and more specifically what not to do. You know, humans have limited attention span, so the training should be gamified. It should be engaging, it should be relevant. Video is known to provide information and people retain it 65,000, 65, thousand that's from the e-learning institute faster via video than they do by any other medium okay and it needs to be done on a regular basis because again we assume that our employees get it and we assume that if we tell them once and they read something that everything's great again no disrespect but employees in a lot of ways are like kids you wouldn't tell your kids no once to doing something stupid like running out in traffic, right? You would remind them every time you got to the edge of the sidewalk, now hold daddy's hand, hold mommy's hand, whatever the case may be, don't go running out. You need to do the same with your employees in cybersecurity. Again, if your customers work in a regular regulated industry of any kind or need to keep up with any compliance standards, your training program needs to make sure that it takes into these accounts. This does. Our baseline cybersecurity training is based on the NIST cybersecurity framework, which is the underlying protocols for most compliance standards, especially on the federal level. Use varied training techniques. Although video is the best way to train them, they need to be constantly reminded via newsletters and articles and information that backs up what you're talking about. This can include infographics as well, little specific you know, percentages and details as to what's going on out there. So they understand not only are you teaching them, but there's a reason you're teaching them. And cultural exchanges have to start at the top. I know you know this, but I'm gonna repeat it anyway. If you as a business owner, a president, a CEO, don't care about this stuff, they're not gonna care about this stuff. Whatever's important to you is what's gonna be important to them. Now we may not like that, do as I say, not what I do. But unfortunately, in the business world, it's do as I do. And that's what they're going to do. So phishing simulations. You constantly need to do ongoing phishing simulations. Why? Because they need to make the mistakes on simulations and not real things. And on average, it takes four phishing simulations, getting caught, that is, to stop repeat offenders, to get them in the mindset of thinking about it. They need to be taught what it is, what to look for, how to respond. And if you gamify it, provide positive reinforcement through something I'm gonna show you later, which is a stack ranking system, they will compete. Let me tell you, you may not think so, but we have had plenty of MSPs roll this out to companies where for some reason something didn't work or something didn't give them the points they were supposed to get. Ooh, they get upset. They want to know why they didn't get the points they were supposed to get for taking a specific training. So as much as people have thought, eh, my company isn't going to get excited about this. Oh, yeah, they will. They know they're being watched. Securities policies and procedures, what works? Well, first, have a set of written policies and procedures, right? That's step one. And it needs to make sure it reflects your company standards, your security standards, any compliance standards, and it can address any administrative, physical, technical standards that you want. First thing is update them regularly. A lot of companies out there will finally put policies and procedures in place and they'll leave them there. And the employee hired in 2025 is signing the same set of policies and procedures from 2020. 
And of course, nothing's changed in our company since then, right? Yeah. Need to be updated minimally yearly. Better yet, quarterly. They should require an acknowledgement, right? What good are they if your employees have not read them, understood them, and agreed to them? Signed off saying, I got it. I hear you. I've read them. I understand them. And I will abide by them. It's a much different conversation than if they violate one when, versus when they can say, oh, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't sure. I, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. At that point, that's a harder decision what to do. If they violate something that was in there, they read, said they understand, and they agreed to, little different conversation. And again, make sure if you're under any kind of compliance that you put in there any compliance standards that need to be met by an individual employee. Make sure that it matches up so you're making sure their activity and what they're doing and behavior matches up with it. Reinforce training continuously. Well, why? Well, because trends change, topics change, the way cyber criminals come at you changes. You know, nobody was doing COVID-19 stuff or who information or Trump said something about whatever, reopening schools if you're passionate about that or math. None of this was going on just six months ago. So they were picking on other things. So you need to make sure you're aware of the trends that are currently going on. What topics are they using to suck people in and how are they doing it? And you need to do this on a regular basis because they are changing as quickly as you teach, the criminals are changing the way they go about it and what they're talking about. Ikram, it's not moving. There we go. So measurement and visual progress, right? We talked about this. In order to get anybody to do something, at least in my world, um, in the sales world, you have to have measurement and you have to have visual progress, right? You have to have something that says, you need to get here and here's how to do it. And I'm gonna show where you're at on a regular basis to everybody. Same thing with this kind of stuff. If employees are gonna take this seriously. They need to know that you're measuring and monitoring what they're doing. So they need to have training scores. They need to show phishing results. There needs to be dark web password data, i.e. do their credentials end up on the dark web? There needs to be the policies and procedures acknowledgement, and you need to talk about employee and company trends as far as what's going on when it comes to your training program and things around that training program. So one of the things that we do and we're able to provide in the software is a dashboard that looks like this. Now, there are two ways that you can view this. You can view this at a management or admin level, which is what this is. And what you're seeing is company overall employee secure score. That's kind of like a credit score. It starts at 300. And what happens is every employee, if you look to the right side of the screen where it says individual ESS ranking, you can make nicknames so nobody who the employee is, you can put real names, whatever you want. And what that does is give them a score based on, did they take the training? Did they pass the training? Are they falling for phishing scam? Did their information end up on the dark web? Um, who's the problem? And it stank ranks them based on the ones in red are high risk. It's a problem. They're either not taking the training or they're taking it and they're not passing the training. That's a problem. But the neat thing about it is you know who. You know who to go address with it. You know what to go do as opposed to just hoping everybody's doing it. The overall company ESS trend, is it going up? Is it going down? External data breaches, how many have happened? The average phishing fail rate for the organization, the average micro quiz score for the organization. So you can see as an organization how you're doing. We've got companies that send out where you have the individual ESS ranking, they send them out weekly so everybody can see them. So the employees know, wow, I'm in the red, I'm being highlighted, I gotta fix this. This just went to all management, including the CEO, my boss, my boss's boss, depending on how big you are. I need to fix this. A lot of companies also gamify it to the point that, tell you what, if you're in the top three at the end of the quarter, as far as score goes, I'll give you a $100 Amazon gift card. Or, oh, I've seen 
an extra day of vacation, something that means something to them. I mean, the reality at the end of the day is being able to see this allows you to figure out who's at the highest risk of possibly letting a breach happen and lets you see what's going on and allows you to address those things as well as incent the behavior that you're looking for. This piece is incredibly important in order to put things in place and make sure that everybody is doing what they're supposed to do. By the way, as I'm going along, I forgot to say, if you have any questions, type them in the questions window and we'll answer them live at the end of this. So feel free to start putting in any questions and we'll go through all of them. So here's the offer. If you're willing to sign up and take this, put it to good use at your company. And again, let's be honest, humans are the re root cause of all breaches. I'm not saying firewalls are not important. I'm not saying the right antivirus anti-malware software is not important. I'm not saying any of that stuff is not important. What I'm saying is if your employee goes and opens the door because they don't know any better, none of that works. It only works if something comes and hits it. You've got to train your employees. You've got to make it a big deal to them so you create the proper behaviors to eliminate that. Don't be like some of the companies that have come to us in the last six months where we had MSPs come to us and say, my customer got hit with ransomware, now they want it. You know, I guess it's kind of like insurance. You want insurance, you don't like paying for insurance, but you're glad it's there if something happens. This will train them, this will put them in the right behavioral mindset, and this will allow you to figure out where your holes are and what you need to do to fix those so everything else that's been put in place will work properly. I can't reiterate this enough. Humans are the flaw with every security issue on the face of the planet. So MVP has been nice enough to offer three free months now. If you sign up, Ikram, in what time frame? Uh, if you sign up for the year, you get three, uh, three free months. Okay, and how long is this offer good for? Uh, it's good till the end of August. Okay, so to the end of August, you can sign up, have this implemented, and when you sign up for the year, you get three free months. You can't beat that. You really can't. It's not expensive, especially when you look at the number of employees that you have and the benefits that you get. I know I'm with the company, but I will tell you this. I just came over about six months ago from another company, and the reason why is I believe in this. I can tell you I've been doing this 30 years, at the beginning of my career, I sold anything. Pay me a lot of money, I'll go sell it. Well, you know what, I'm 52 now. In about my late 30s, I went, no. If I don't believe in it, I don't agree with it, and I don't think it's worthwhile and priced properly, I'm not doing it anymore. So I can honestly look video to video and tell you that I believe in this product wholeheartedly, or I wouldn't be with the company talking to you today. So I really appreciate your time. And I'm going to throw this back over to Ikram. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Um, I have a couple of questions that came, so if you don't mind. Um, so the first question is: Is this a uh, is this a website uh, or is this a system? How does it work? So basically, it's all cloud-based. So you don't need to install anything. It's very secure. You're not putting anything on each uh, each PC. What happens is you're sending out an email and they sign up and then it's able to track the data back uh, via their email and via the portal that they're going in and taking their trainings on. So very easy, uh, nothing that'll interrupt your day or interrupt your processes or your technical environment. Yeah, I mean, I'll add as well that part of this is that uh, we actually will fish your company. We'll send fake phishing emails. We'll see who clicked on them, who understand, who, I mean, who actually thought that they can, um, uh, that the UPS was sending them something and they needed to click on it right away. So uh, giving you examples of who is your risk and who is not your risk. Uh, I truly believe in this product as well. And I really feel that if employees know better and they know what to not to click on, they become better not only uh, at work, but also at home across the board, it's a benefit. Okay, I uh, hope that answered your question. Next uh, question is, 
how much is this? Um, so I'll answer that. Uh, and it's per user and depends. So if you have a gold package with us, if you're part of MVP's total protection, gold, we offer this, it's included, it's not additional. Uh, for everybody else, this is just a, a basically a couple of dollars per user, uh, depends on the package and how many people you have. So you'll have to call us and we'll give you exact pricing, but uh, it's just a couple of bucks per user per month, but you get all the benefit out of it from a training perspective, dark web perspective, and most importantly, uh, fishing perspective. Two uh, more points on if, you, if you're okay. Part of this program is something called catch fish, and Ikram can demonstrate it to anybody that wants to see it one on one. He'd be happy to. Catch fish is a little button that goes at the top of your Outlook, whether it's 365 or the Prem based or whatever the case may be. What that button allows you to do is press a single button if you think it's a phishing email. Over to the right side, a panel will open up. And if it is a phishing email, one of ours, it'll say, confetti, congratulations, you caught a fish. But then it will tell why it's a fish. So rather than also just waiting for phishing simulations, they can look at that right then and there, look at their email in front of them, and it will tell them, why is it a fish? What are the things that make this a phishing email? If it's not one of ours, they can say send for analysis and through a bunch of machine learning that we've built in and AI, it'll go out, it'll look at the email and all the uh, links and wording and attachments, and it'll come back and it'll tell you what the likelihood this is a fish is and why it thinks that. And then again, point you exactly where it thinks it is, where it doesn't. So there's learning on the fly right there with their email in front of them. And therefore they just don't have to remember their last phishing simulation, they can check on the fly. The last thing is remember, employees get comfortable at home. I don't know how many of you have employees at home because of this, but my wife, as I said, works for the state and the whole state is working from home if that tells you anything about what's going on over here. So employees get really comfy. My wife's desk is right over there and it's my bed. She sits on the bed every day and works because we don't have another desk in the house. Why is this important, Matthew? I appreciate the fact that she gets to relax all day. It's important because the more people relax and the more calm they are and the happier they are, the more likely they are to do something stupid every time because now they're checking their personal email on that work laptop. And anything that's coming in, they're going, hey, no big deal. Oh, I want to know about this. Oh, interesting. I want to click this article. It's not the same as when they're in the office. I know you guys probably know that from yourselves, and I just wanna make that point incredibly clear how important that is, because as soon as employees feel relaxed, they're gonna do more stupid things. Sorry, Akram, I just wanted to make those points. I understand, uh, and you're right, um, absolutely. Uh, people do get comfortable at home, and uh, they're not paying as much attention as they should. Uh, one more question came in while you were talking. Uh, when do you anticipate state or federal mandates coming through for cybersecurity training? It depends on the state, to be honest. There are about 10 states, and I don't know them off the top of my head, that are already implementing them, like right now. California, New York, I know South Carolina is working on one. I know Georgia is working on one. Um, I want to say Texas has almost implemented theirs. I, again, I don't remember the list of states off the top of my head, but my gut tells me based on what we're seeing and the number of states doing it, I would say by mid next year, end of next year at the very latest, these security standards are gonna be put in place. And I can guarantee you again, video to video, that cybersecurity awareness training is part of every single one of them. Any compliance you look for out there has this as a component of it. Um, I agree with you completely. And in New York, being all of us in New York here, uh, the SHIELD Act is what uh, this is all about. The SHIELD Act uh, is something that uh, New York is uh, getting voted on, is going to be released, and it includes cybersecurity, but cybersecurity training. And in general, it's about it's for businesses to do the best that they can to be as secure as they can be. And it's giving you a, st st uh, a set of standards and guidelines to to uh, make sure that you adhere to at least those. Uh, it's not as stringent as PCI or what have you, but it's uh, it's pretty detailed. 
and obviously uh, this training is part of it so the earlier you start the better um, one other question came in are some uh, common email scams you are seeing because of covid well a lot of them are co your covid test results for people that have taken the test and are nervous about getting it they're sending out ones about your covid test results they are spoofing the CDC website with urgent information about your particular state. Um, they're coming out with stuff from the WHO on new uh, things about the virus and possible cures. There's uh, medical information about a vaccine that will be available within the next two weeks uh, from this company. Click here to find out more. Uh, it goes on and on. Anything that can play on your emotions, frighten you, or excite you, they're putting it out there. And I mean, I've just seen dozens of different ones. And it, look, it's really scary. And I won't say that I haven't been tempted to click on things also, but you know, I make it a habit to do a bunch of stuff, including use my catchfish login to check it first to make sure what I'm dealing with. Um, because there are several that have been very real and I was like, I want that information. Um, but so yeah, I mean, it's hard to even narrow it down at this point because they're coming up with new things every day. Uh, yes, I, I couldn't agree with what you said more. Um, and uh, COVID is just uh, one other thing that pe people click on stuff because they're scared, because they are curious, because they want more information. And, and uh, hackers are smart. They're they're playing those hard strings. You know, they're uh, they're putting what you want to see in front of you to get you to click on something. And you may even get what you're looking for so some hackers will actually allow you to click on it and you'll see the article and you'll read it and you'll get that satisfaction but at the same time uh, because you're clicking that link uh they were they able put a key logger on your system or something else that's right you know the other things one of the ones that i love the most lately somebody wants some group has done a fantastic job spoofing amazon i mean if you do an order on amazon right and the delivery notices you get and everything if you look at it, you gotta look very carefully. The biggest thing though you need to understand and look out for with this one, I'll give you a secret if you're not doing it already. They do an amazing job, but people get sucked into the fact that they're not thinking, yes, I ordered something, yes, it's this, and yes, it was supposed to be here on this date. They never think the fact that I ordered it with my personal email, not my work email. So, I mean, that's something that's pretty obvious there, that if you get something on your work email and you never use that for Amazon, there's a pretty good likelihood that that's not whatever. Amazon just doesn't switch emails on you. But as I said, emotion, at home. Hey, this is what I ordered. Not looking at it, not thinking about it. Click, done. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, this is the that was all the questions and i hope you guys found this beneficial uh, if you guys are interested and you talk to your psm your partner success manager uh, they'll be able to even schedule a demo where we can come in and actually log into the portal and give you the more detail and show you how it works and how your employees will get training and what they would look at and uh, what the training looks like and what the quiz at the end of it look like and the micro trainings and how it affects the score and how we would help you uh, deliver this to your company. Obviously, it's not just the fact that you're gonna come in and sign up uh, and you get this login and that's that. It's a, it really truly has to be implemented like a, a tool and it has to be, people have to be trained on and shown what to do. It's not very hard, it doesn't take that long. But once you de deliver it properly and they have buy-in because buy-in comes from the top down, then people will start using it you'll be more secure, they'll be better stewards of the internet, and it's a win-win. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do here, is get you the right tools to make your network and technology continuously work and be available. Uh, but, you know, we're running a little short, a little, uh, we're finishing up a little early today. If anybody has any other questions, don't hesitate to contact us. I appreciate your time. Uh, we just 15 minutes or so before, uh, uh, early so that gives you some time to uh, settle back in before you thanks for taking the lunch with us 
and enjoy and uh, joining us. We will have this recording available online by tomorrow uh, in our MVP University. And um, Jamie will also be sending everybody an email to follow up. Uh, thank you. Oh, one more question came in. Sorry. Okay, so it says, if you're not an MVP client, how do you get this offer? Uh, well, if you're not a client of ours, thanks for joining us today. And uh, this could be a la carte. So you would get it a la carte. You just contact us and we'll talk to sales and then we'll create a, a proposal for you and you'll get a la carte and you'll get this offer because you all you have to do is mention the webinar and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that uh, you get the offer. Uh, thanks for asking. Looking forward to talking to you. Uh, and everybody else, thanks a lot for joining us. Matt, thanks a lot. Uh, thank great job. Uh, we had Jonathan as well, but uh, thank you, Jonathan, for joining. Um, and uh, without further ado, you guys have a great uh, rest of the day and tomorrow a great weekend and a great Friday and a great weekend. Be safe, everybody out there, not only uh, in life, but also in uh, the cyber world. So just be safe <laughs> across the board. All right. Thank you.